I now hand the conference over to Mr. Deepak Jain, Chairman and Managing Director of Lumax Industries Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me at the outset wish everyone a good health and a safe well-being during this pandemic. A very warm welcome to the Q1 FY22 earnings call of Lumax Industries Limited. Along with me on this call, I have Mr. Anmol Jain, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Vineet Sani, CEO and Senior Executive Director, Mr. Naval Khanna, and from the finance team, Mr. Sanjay Mehta, Shruti Khan, and Ankit Fakral, along with Priyanka Sharma, our Head Corporate Communication, and SGA, our Investor Relation Advisors. The result and investor presentations are uploaded on the Stock Exchange and company website, and I hope everybody has had a chance to look at it. Before we start with the discussion on the financial performance of the company, I would like to highlight on some of the key challenges prevailing in the automotive industry currently in India. The OEM production in Q1 FY22 has declined by 36% from Q4 FY21 due to the unforeseen resurgence of COVID 2.0 in the beginning of the current financial year, resulting into regional lockdowns. The volatility in commodity prices coupled with chip shortages has also impacted OEMs to sustain their production in Q1 FY22. However, the industry has Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management is disconnected. Kindly stay on line till I reconnect them. Gentlemen, we have the management line reconnected to the call. Thank you and over to you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, regret this brief uh, disconnect. Let me just restart. The volatility in commodity prices coupled with chip shortages has also impacted OEMs to sustain their production in Q1 and Q22. However, the industry has shown signs of recovery from July onwards. The production in the upcoming quarters highly depends on how the pandemic situation takes shape along with the vaccination drive across the country. The volatility of commodity prices, chip shortages may also impact OEM production. I would now like to give you a brief overview of our business at Lumax Industries. Our company is engaged in production and delivery of automotive lighting solutions, two-wheeler, passenger cars, farm equipment space, and commercial vehicle segment. We are the preferred suppliers to OEMs in India and continue to be the market leaders. At Lumax, we have a strong inclination and presence in the design of components, and our engagement starts from the design phase, working to offer our customers the best technology solutions. Lighting is not only a crucial aspect of safety, but also has we also have a new technology group and design studios with a team of engineers focused only on new advanced technologies and design. Lumac keeps creating new concepts and shares them with the OEMs. Construction at Sunan Gujarat is also now at full swing after minor disruptions during the first quarter owing to the state level lockdown restrictions. We are expecting the plant to be operational by the end of third quarter of this year. 
the new electronic bulb facility is expected to commence by the end of second quarter of this year. The new product launches during the quarter, which consist of Lumax lighting, are as follows. In the passenger vehicle segment, for the XUV700 of Mahindra Mahindra, we do supply high mount top lamps, roof lamps, and other smaller lamps. In the commercial vehicle segment, in E Alpha of Mahindra Mahindra, we are supplying edge lamp and the blinker lamp. And in the two wheeler space, for the Maestro Edge 125 Hero Motor Corp, we are supplying the front blinker lamps. We are hopeful for the upcoming quarter with expectation of revival in demand. The monsoon has also started off well across the nation and economic activities are opening up gradually. At Lumax, we have a well-defined strategy in place to drive the growth and achieve profitability. We are making decisive investments in technology leading to the path of innovation which would differentiate us from our peers and also help in expanding customer portfolio. The company has secured new orders worth rupees 250 crores from OEMs for their upcoming models as well as localization of lamps of existing models, out of which rupees 50 crores is replacement business and rupees 200 crores is new business, which is expected to fully realize in FY2324. The Bangalore plant of the company has been recognized by Toyota Kiloka Motor for achieving zero defect supplies for the year 2020. The Panlagar plant of the company has also won the first position in the competition held by ATMA in the customer complaint category. Now, I would like to hand over the line to Mr. Sanjay Mehta, Group CFO, to update you on the financial performance of the company. Good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. Uh, let me brief on operational and financial performance of the company during FY2021. Uh, operational highlights, the sales of LD, LED lighting extends as 34% of our total revenue and of conventional lighting extends as 66% during Q1 FY22. The product mix for Q1 and the percentage of total revenue is 62% of front lighting, 28% rear lighting, and 10% others. The segment mix for Q1 as a percentage of total revenue is 65% passenger vehicles, 28% two-wheelers, and 7% commercial vehicles. Uh, the consolidated financial performance for Q1, the revenue stood at rupees 314 crores for uh, Q122 as against 504 crores for Q4 FY21. The revenue for Q121 stood at 78 crores. I'm giving both the figure of the last Q4 and Q1. Excluding mold sales, the revenue for Q1 is at 301 crores against 491 crores in Q4 FY21. The revenue for FY21 Q1 stood at 74 crores. The company reported consolidated habit of rupees 9 crore and loss after tax and sale of associated rupees 10 crore in Q1 and FY22. The capex during the quarter was rupees 9 crore. Uh, that is all from my side. Uh, we will now open the call for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abhishek Jain from Dalat Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, from last couple of quarters, the company is facing significant pressure on the gross margin. Uh, is it because of the hard OEMs uh, 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 negotiation with the auto banks? And can we predict that uh, it will be difficult to pass on the entire RM inflation to OEMs? The one reason is the electronics components, more uses of electronics components, and yes, the commodity prices has also increased. So the increase what has been in the Q1 FY22, it is expected to be recovered to the next nine months. 
and it's basically it's because of the COVID reason the, the settlement of Romitel also is taking slight time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, inflation will continue to be uh, at a higher side in the uh, in second quarter as well as. So, can we expect that uh, again there will be some pressure on this uh, gross margin side? We what we have uh, uh, seen in this quarter. So, we do not expect uh, this is almost there. We do not expect any significant change in the gross margin. The raw material consumption, if I look at the annualized uh, raw material consumption for the last year, it was uh, approximately... Mr. Jain, your voice is not audible. So... Uh... Sorry, Am I on? the line for the management just got disconnected. Can you turn line till I reconnect it? The person you are speaking with has put your call on hold. Please stay on the line. आप जिस व्यक्ति से बात कर रहे हैं उसने आपकी कॉल को होल्ड पर रखा है कृपया लाइन पर बने रहें। The person you are speaking with has put your call on hold. Please stay on the line. आप जिस व्यक्ति से बात कर रहे हैं उसने आपकी कॉल को होल्ड पर रखा है वो तो है ही ना पिछले वाले उसमें कौन कौन बता रहे Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management line reconnected to the call. Thank you. Now, what do you say? Yeah, good. Apologies for this inconvenience, uh, friends. So I was talking about the gross margin, and I was referring to if you look at the full year of 2021, our gross margin or the raw material consumption was at 63 percent, and for Q1 FY22, it still stands at about 63.6 percent. If you compare it from Q4 consecutive quarters, yes, it has gone up by about 1.3 percent. But we are very hopeful that in the subsequent quarters we will be able to recover whatever raw material escal uh, escalations have been caused due to inflationary measures. Uh, we have contractual agreements with most of our OEMs uh, on a back-to-back -back arrangement on the escalation of raw material prices. So I don't see gross margin being a challenge going forward. Uh, okay, sir. Got it. Uh, sir, as shortage of the semiconductor to persist in the coming quarter, as uh, also indicated by the Maruti. So, in this environment, what is your revenue uh, growth target uh, for FY22? Well, I think uh, for FY22, let's uh, talk about the industry. Basically, growth target was somewhere between 15 to 20 percent during the start of the fiscal year. Then basically Corona 2.4 happened, and I think the industry per se has actually reduced the target from 15 to 20 to about 10 to 15 percent. Of course, it's on a much lower base if I look at from FY20. Now, our assessment is that for the full year, we should be better than basically the industry target, given the new order books also 
as well as basically a better recovery from July August. Uh, full year is actually extremely difficult to predict. There are multiple volatilities because of COVID 3.0, um, you know, variability, semiconductor shortages. But at least for the next three months, July, uh, August, September, I think what we are looking at is a sustained production run, uh, not basically having any major disruptions coming in. As and when, I think our OEMs will share more feedback on the semiconductors. Uh, we will basically uh, be fine and aligning our plans accordingly. Okay, sir. So, sir, as you mentioned that uh, you want the new business uh, of around 200 crores. So, uh, who are the key clients uh, from where you got this business? Is it for the uh, uh, this MG Motors or and Kia? So, so primarily in the past car, MG Motors is one of the key customers where we have got basically new business awarded. We've also got basically businesses awarded in the two-wheeler segment, uh, which is with TBS as well as with World NQ. So these are some new customer additions which are there. Uh, of course, I will not be able to talk about model-specific issues. Uh, but then also, of course, we are pushing from our current customers to get certain new orders on their current and new platforms. And sir, uh, you are also looking to enter into the HBSC panel. So, just uh, wanted to know what is the progress uh, right now. As I mentioned in the last time, that we are basically going to be discussing with the customer in step by step um, manner. We are going to start the production in 22 23. Um, I think the total market size of this is approximately 600 crores as a potential. And uh, we basically are very close to getting now firm LOIs with uh, one customer, uh, hopefully in this quarter. So your rev, uh, it will uh, start to reflect in the uh, profit and loss account only from 20, FY22 or the second half of FY22? FY22, yes, 2223, once you get the order. Okay, sir. Sir, my last question is related with the depreciation that has gone down uh, quarter and quarter basis. So, what is the reason? The capacity utilization uh, uh, during the Q1, uh, definitely the depreciation calculated on fixed basis. So, accordingly, it has been. So, uh, uh, the rate would be around the 17 crores in the coming quarter, right, sir? 17 to 18 crores. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Thanks, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hasmukh Kala from Finvest Advisors. Please go ahead. The entire team of Lumex industry. Sir, we do understand that uh, times are very tough for the auto industry as well as for the company. I hope you are able to hear me, sir. Yes, Hasmukh, I'm able to hear you. Okay. Me. Yeah, yeah. Now, what I was looking at, uh, you did say that, uh, you know, you hope to beat the industry estimate target. Now, if I look at a similar position in FY21, in Q1, we reported a net loss of 31.6 crore. And in the remaining three quarters, we posted a pack of 50 crore, turning the table on the positive side. Now, I think the loss that we have now reported 10 crore seems to be quite manageable. So what will be your view, subject to, you know, this chip shortage, I think, has created a havoc in the auto industry and several other sectors as well. So how do you see things shaping up in FY22? And then how are you, and, 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 and continue to that, and how are you planning, you know, to spend 160 crore uh, capex, which we had planned? So let me first take the first question. I think clearly our revenue, uh, you know, you're right. I mean, so when we are actually seeing good signs of recovery in the month of July, mm -hmm. I'm expecting personally not really any demand suppression coming forward. Uh, there would basically be production realignment based on the volatility like chip shortages, which we'll be very mm -hmm. close, closely working with our OEMs. Mm -hmm. However, as I mentioned, the revenue outlook for the year what we are at least expecting is much better, a double-digit high basically growth coming in. If basically the Corona 3.0 comes in also, we 
do as an industry feel that we have sufficient experience to actually manage that? And hopefully with the vaccination, it would not be as severe as COVID 2.4. Second, right. I think if you're also looking at the profitability, if you see in our this quarter itself, I mean, say we are consistently trying to focus on reducing our fixed costs yeah. and at least try and get as much recovery as possible uh, in the next nine months so that at least our EBITDA margins are a healthy double digit. So that's, yeah. I think, our target uh, internally. Um, and at least as of now, we are not basically dissuaded by the fact that there are variabilities, but we still are planning to stick to the target. In terms of your uh, investment of about 160 CR, I'll let Anmol basically take that. So, Hasmukh Bhai, this is Anmol Jain. So, yes, just to yes. supplement on what Deepak had mentioned, I think we do anticipate and based on what we have seen in the month of July and so far in the month of August, we have come back to capacity utilizations of almost 85 to 90 percent across all our facilities, which is a very encouraging sign. And so we do expect that for the full year, our revenue forecast should be anywhere between, a, you know, considering the new order book as well, better than industry growth. We anticipate anywhere around 25 to 30 percent uh, revenue growth for the full year, despite the Q1 uh, deficit. And okay. uh, Frankly, we do expect that we should come back as close as possible to the 2018-19 levels of profitability in terms of uh, absolute amounts. That is at least the internal target. So oh, that, that is great. Uh, yeah. Crossing a three-digit uh, PPT. Yeah. We had done 104 crore in FY19. So that is our endeavor that we come back to a FY19 uh, level of PBT and obviously our uh, EBITDA margin should be on a double-digit uh, basis. So that is our endeavor and uh, we are doing a, a lot internally in terms of cost cutting and rationalization of costs with the added uh, benefits of capacity utilization and enhanced capacity utilization. We should be able to offset uh, in the subsequent quarters. Right. Coming to your question of CAPEX, so, you know, the majority, almost 50% of the CAPEX was related to the brownfield expansion in Gujarat facility, which is pretty much on track. There have been slight, maybe a month delay because of COVID 2.0, uh, because of shortage of uh, oxygen, etc. However, we do anticipate that this plant would uh, soon, probably in uh, by the next quarter, go online and hence the capitalization will start appearing on the books. So that would be the major chunk of it. Uh, apart from that, uh, you know, the electronic uh, facility, which is also pretty much in the last stages of commissioning, will also have certain capitalization of approximately 20 to 25 crores, which hmm. will also come into play. So we do expect that maybe there would be almost close to 80 to 90 percent of this 160 crore uh, annual plan. This will actually get uh, capitalized uh, during the subsequent quarters in the books of accounts. Okay. And sir, one last question from my side. We understand that Hyundai is planning to uh, get it to uh, Gurgaon area like they have set up a big office. So what are their plans? And you know, how, how does it spell out for our uh, SLU Max? So SLU Max will continue to strategically basically focus on Hyundai. I think it's too early to say about their plans in the NCR. They've already just established an office. Um, so Amisa, I think as and when Amisa, they discuss and decide more about their plan, we we'll probably will hear to media, we will align with them. Hyundai mm -hmm. remains for the group a very yes. key and strategic customer, and right. uh, we will continue to basically, um, you know, service them as a single source full capability supply. Okay, so are they going to set up a plant in Gurgaon, sir? Hyundai? I, I would, I, I would not be able to comment on it beyond okay. what the media shows. Okay, okay, and just uh, a rejoinder to this, SL Lumex also you see similar progress as we are expecting in uh, Lumex industry. Sorry. For SL Lumex also, are we expecting similar performance as we are expecting in uh, Lumex industry in terms of the revenue growth trajectory and the margin level? Yeah, because SL Lumex is very closely linked with one single customer, which is Hyundai and Kia. So that I think, as based on their performance, they would be expecting that. Hmm. Okay. okay, fine. Thank you. I'll join the team. Thank you.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equity Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, so, firstly, on this, uh, uh, you said the electronic cost also increased along with the RM cost. So, is that also a pass through with OEMs or we face challenges in passing that? No, I think, see, all the inflatory costs um, are actually have contractual discussions with the OEMs. I think the raw material as well as more on the electronic components, there has been a much more steeper price increases. Uh, as compared to a regular kind of a flow. And also because of shortages of chips, I think electronic components also have actually seen a disruption in the supply demand. So we continue to basically discuss with our OEMs uh, beyond also contractual obligations to actually ask for price solution. Okay, okay. And secondly, on this uh, electronic facility, which you said will, will come on board uh, in the next quarter mostly, so, uh, post that, uh, uh, when we localize some of these things, uh, there will be also be some margin expansion possibility from that side. Yeah, I mean, so we have said that earlier that I think, you know, once after insourcing, you could definitely see a margin expansion on our basically performance. And that this will continue to basically uh, do our localization efforts on electronic components, uh, which basically will have certain basically, um, you have to also understand that as much as we reduce our imports, you know, the dollar and rupee parity also plays in uh, because you are able to basically then have a better control on the rupee value. Okay, okay, I got it. So with, with that, uh, how would our, our basically in case of LEDs, uh, what is the import content right now? If we can just uh, repeat those numbers and how that will change for the next one or two years? LED will continue to basically import because there are no local sources of LEDs per se. But I think our emphasis and focus remains is that we would basically have the imported content on a PCB, uh, which are certain electronic components and value add that we should basically be able to do. So just to let you know and give an example, I mean, say on a headlamp, I mean, say our import content on LED is almost about 60%, and there's an opportunity of about 30% for localization. And on a tail lamp, it's about 30%, where 15% is a localization opportunity. Okay, and I was just into that only, the import content for LED lamp or or not just LEDs. Okay, yeah. And, that, 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 uh, that. and, and you also mentioned that uh, among the OEMs that the uh, order that you got of 200 crores new business uh, in PD, MG is the main, and two-wheeler, RE, and TVS, can you also share uh, uh, currently what would be our share of business is a hero? I mean, say in hero sourcing, what would be our share and how that is increasing? Uh, uh, how go expectation going ahead? On hero, you're talking about hero motor car. Yeah, 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 hero motor car. So for hero motor car, we are at around about 45 percent as our SOB, and we continue and we think that will be sustained with this 45 percent. Okay. And lastly, uh, on some of these uh, new electric two-wheeler companies, uh, how are we engaging any customers that we got from that side? We we are in discussions, uh, but we have not had any acquisitions right now. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anish Munka from JST Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And firstly, I want to congratulate the whole team of Lumax DKGN Group for completing 75 years of operations. Thank you. Thank you, Anish. Yeah. So I just have a single question. So Deepak, sir, like what we see from the current semiconductor issue is uh, that the production levels are affected by 10 to 25 percent for different uh, PV OEMs compared to the end consumer demand. So this has also led to the waiting times in to increase uh, to two to six months for most models. So could this be a blessing in disguise and help OEMs to pass on the increased raw material prices, which they have been struggling with for the past few quarters? Thank you. Uh, well, this is a more industry-related question. I think uh, the OEMs have been struggling to not pass on. I think strategically they have decided not to pass on because wherever... We've been going through a very, very volatile time. 
and i think you know now uh, they are basically not passing on fully they are actually kind of calibrating the pass ons in terms of the percentage enhancement of what it would be uh, so i think this will be a trend which will continue for at least uh, you know the few months uh, till this kind of volatility subsides hopefully in the next financial year uh, but i think we have to have a very fine balance between demand suppression as well as the supply chain capability so this is the i would say the fine balancing which all of we and the struggling with thank you and all the best sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kripa shankar from dollar capital please go ahead hi uh, thank you for taking my question so just want to know what is the started as a cross debt and net debt this quarter and expectation of uh, repayment of debt by this year Uh, we have a debt of around uh, 391 crores as on 30th of june out of that the short term working capital is 341 and the long term is 50 crores so working capital over the time and because of the lesser capacity utilization it has been increased which we we, we are of the opinion and uh, it will be stabilized in coming 9 months time regarding long term debt we have taken for the sanad expansion and uh, the, it will be for the long term for so more than 5 years Okay, and what will be the cash position? Cash position, uh, if I will take in the, I am having the the limit balance of almost around seventy five to hundred crores. Okay, okay, right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Shah from East Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, good morning, sir. Uh, sir, I have a couple of questions. Sir, uh, I want I wanted to know Maruti has announced reduced shifts uh, due to chip shortage. So how much business loss are we expecting in next quarter? Uh, do we have similar updates from any other OEMs? Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Shah, but there is a disturbance coming from your line. Can you tell your line while the management answers your question? So I think uh, Maruti has just very recently announced about a few basically model mix which are changed as well as certain production volume which has come down. Um, I think it's also aligned with certain other OEMs coming in. As I mentioned, that this is a very very um, ever changing dynamic situation because all the OEMs are trying to also plan their model mix so that depending on whatever semiconductor or PC is available, they'll be able to make. So still very very uh, soon to say what kind of this thing, but as of now, as I said in the full year, we don't expect uh, that big an issue. Uh, we will continue to monitor and align ourselves with basically the OEM schedule requirements. Oh, okay, sir. And sir, uh, what is the plan of diversification? how long it will take to diversify our business from uh, only lighting to other segments well i think this company as i mentioned in my opening comments is a fully service supplier on lighting solutions having a 38 year relationship with stand electric who is a partner and promoter from japan Uh, we will continue to focus on lighting the only diversification right now in terms of the add-on product we are doing is on basically the hvac panel systems which also is a product with standard uh, so this is the focus currently and the company continues to focus on retaining its market leadership in lighting okay thank you sir that is all thank you We would like to remind participants that you may press star one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Akash Mehta from Capas Investment. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I had two questions. Uh, so, quite a few OEMs are saying the earnings call that they do not do not want to put the entire pricing pressure on the customers through price hikes. since it might lo- result in a loss of sales so do we have such pressure from oems in terms of price recovery uh, well I, i think the price escalation is a very very see let's understand this very clearly i think everyone's talking about prices 
from a supply chain to OEM, the price pressures are very different. And then obviously the OEMs have to kind of calibrate depending on what and how they would like to see the supply chain pressures, the raw material inflatory pressures, as well as basically pressures on demand. So I think the OEM will take its own call uh, if they want to pass on how much they want to pass on. From a supply chain and from Dumas perspective, we have been consistently requesting the OEMs for obviously any inflation which are there in the system, specifically on raw material components. And we do have contractual obligations with our OEMs uh, that basically get us covered either usually a quarter or in a six month basis, moving average. But since the hikes have been also exceptional, we have also beyond the contractual obligation have been requesting them uh, to kind of expedite these settlements. Okay, okay, makes sense. And uh, additionally, uh, there have been quite a few EV models announced by OEMs during this quarter. Are we in talks with any for the same? For our current, uh, basically, customer portfolio, uh, we are probably in talks with almost all the OEMs for their EV models, um, as well as in some of the cases, we have already secured businesses on their EVs. I think EVs will be a trend which will continue across segments, and we would be engaged with this. Um, but I think there are also certain new age players which are dealing only in EV, and the company is in discussion, although we have not received a firm order with them, but we are in discussions uh, with that. Okay. And just lastly, uh, what is the progress in the Gujarat facility? I think I missed out on this part. Sorry, for which facility? The Gujarat facility. Uh, so the Gujarat facility, we have already done basically our expansion plans, and I mean, say we are expecting the plant to be operational by the end of third quarter this year. Third quarter. Okay. All right. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reminder to the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Kunal Jain from District Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I want to know, uh, like to know what would be the capacity utilization for uh, throughout this quarter and how are we placed for July and August month? So the capacity utilization for this quarter is basically around about 60%. Uh, however, and this was basically variable from 80% in April to almost 30% in May, and then coming back to about 70% level in June. However, I think now in July, we are seeing a healthy recovery with almost 85% capacity utilization. And going forward, uh, we expect this to sustain like we were doing in Q4 of uh, last fiscal year. Okay, sir. Okay. That's it. That's it from my side, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We would like to remind participants that you may press star 1 to ask a question. Participants to ask a question, you may press star and 1 now. The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equity Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Mr. Dumis, expect uh, things. So, when can we expect an order in this from expert panel? So, we would expect a business confirmation, hopefully, in the current quarter for the HVAC panel from the first OEM. And as mentioned before, the production and revenue of it will only come in FY23. And generally, uh, what is the content uh, of these panels in a car, in a say, mid-size car? In terms of value, it would be close to approximately 2,000 rupees per vehicle, uh, depending on the model and the features. But I'm just giving you a very ballpark uh, estimate per vehicle content. Okay, and like say, uh, if you get a contract, say order, so will we be a sole supplier for that model or is it like shared between different uh, two or three suppliers? Well, it really depends on the volume of the model, but as of now, the engagement which we have with one of the OEMs is as a 100% share of business for that particular model. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Participants to ask a question. You may press star in one now. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Deepak Jain from Lumax Industries Limited for closing comments. Well, I would just like to thank everyone for joining on today's call. I would also like to say that we remain confident on the growing prospects of India and the automobile and auto component industry. I hope you've been able to respond to your queries adequately and for any further information, we request you to kindly get in touch with SGA. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you once again. Thank you. On behalf of Lumax Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.